Hi everyone, Kurt with Hypnodyne. Just a quick update. Uh, we have a new icon right here. Look at those lungs. That's the respiration. I'm wearing uh, the nasal sensor. You can see here in orange. Now, clearly, if I talk, that doesn't look very nice, but if I just breathe, you can see that it goes up and down, right? Now, this respiration uh, value is also hooked into the JavaScript, so you can do things uh, in response to um, the seizing of the breathing rhythm. So let's say that I'm breathing, and then I'm going to stop breathing, and what you will see is that this is going to drop, and the breathing alarm is going to go off. And then I'll explain a little bit about the scripting and how you can uh, interface with this. So I'll go now. Breathing. And I stop breathing. And see the alarm went off. If I resume breathing, it switches off now. It takes about four seconds before uh, the breathing level goes down. If I make it shorter than that, it's going to have false positives. So I think for our purposes, this is uh, calibrated correctly. Because what you can then do is um, create some kind of uh, vibratory stimulus. So I have that here in the apnea detector. So let's say I'm recording now. Now this time when I stop breathing, it's going to uh, create a vibration. The idea, the intent there is to cause me to turn around. It's going to keep vibrating until I start breathing again. So imagine you're having apneas at night, perhaps related to some particular sleeping position. So let's try it again. I'm going to stop breathing now. Breathing. And stop. Stop breathing now. All right, what you see here is the vibration that's reflected on the accelerometer. I'm not sure if you can actually hear it buzzing on my head, but that's what it looks like on the accelerometer tray. So then you can see where it went off. I'm going to try it again. Yeah, see, it's going to keep um, buzzing until you resume breathing. I calibrated this using um, a recording that had a lot of apneas to try to maximize the speed with which it can stimulate you and at any rate detect the drop in, uh, in the breathing rhythm, but at the same time not have false positives. Like sometimes you breathe really slowly. I'm going to give you an example of that. So you see it's able to go down to 40. Sometimes if you're breathing really uh, shallow and slow, it can go down to 35. So I set the threshold to about 20, uh, which means it's going to yeah, maybe wait four seconds or thereabouts after you stop breathing to actually drop below 40. And then the, the threshold, of course, of, uh, of 20 is, is defined on the script. So that's easily changeable. So now what I want to show you is the uh, HD scorer side of things. Because this is what uh, those desaturations are going to look like. We have a new version here of the HD scorer, by the way, where you can switch channels on and off. So I, I want to see, I don't care about the accelerometer. I want to see the airflow. So the airflow is here. And you can see if we move throughout this that there are points in which, uh, for example, here, see how it went flat? Now what I will do is load markers that were output. Let's test uh, the 20 threshold. I tried different thresholds to see which one would work best. And 20 turned out to be to be the right one. 
So all of these blue ones are apnea markers. Right now it's marking the epoch, uh, but they're actually expressed in seconds and there's multiple ones overlapping. So that's still gonna get a lot better. But if I go to the marker for apnea, you see that we indeed have an apnea right here. And let's try to go here. Apnea right here. I'm going to the blue areas, right? And apnea right here. So he says here the number of the second. I'm going to move over to this side, another apnea. So a lot of apneas. You can see the head position. When, when the person is facing up, they're, of course, more frequent. There's another one seemingly right here. And I'd say, yeah, that's definitely... It's about 10 seconds apnea. Now, during these 10 seconds, look, I haven't finished transferring the SpO2 calculation from the old software, but you're going to get the SpO2 value here as well. That, that comes in through the same nasal sensor. And uh, during these long apneas of uh, 50, 20 seconds, the um, oxygen level in the blood goes from 93% very often to 88%, sometimes 86%. To give you an idea to get to that level, I have to hold my breath uh, literally until I'm suffocating. So this is bad, bad thing to have happen to you while you're sleeping. And of course, because we're, we have a multi-sensor setup here, you can also see, see the snoring. So it actually looks, you know, see here the, the snoring is becoming progressively shorter until there's a cessation in breathing. And then here it resumes again. Now, what I want to do is go through normal areas and make sure that there are no false negatives. So all of these, none of these got the apnea marker. And in fact, we have regular breathing. Uh, let's test another area. This is all, this all should have no apneas. This all here too should have no apneas. But now we move to uh, the place where there are apneas and try to find the blue marker. There, blue marker apnea. So this is actually very, very accurate. Now the recording is just a, it's an old recording that I've uh, calibrated the detection based on. So on this recording, there's no vibration of stimulation of any sort going on. But we're going to try that relatively soon. So I hope this was uh, interesting. And uh, perhaps in another time, I'll, I'll cover the, uh, the actual script, which is going to be also... Well, it's going to be distributed with the software, with the new version, and um, the name, sorry, the name of the script, simply apnea detector. You can uh, change it around and see if you want to change the threshold or, or, or do a different type of stimulation. You could use light. Uh, you could use other things as well, okay? Because this value, the respiration value, goes straight into the script. And so with JavaScript, you can intercept uh, this respiration rate. That's all I have for today. Oh, there's an interesting uh, topic here as well. You see the light is going crazy. The reason for that is that I have fluorescent light. The monitor does that too because it flickers. So when, uh, when you have either darkness or natural light, that doesn't do that. I guess I could filter it, but no problem. All right, that's all I had for today, and thanks for watching.